Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining this uh, presentation. Um, so today I'm here to talk about uh, FFmpeg 5 Part 2, uh, Integration in GStreamer, <coughs> um, aka uh, LCEVC. So this uh, codec was actually uh, implemented and created by uh, a company based in London called Vinova. And they came to us because they wanted to uh, integrate that codec into GStreamer. Now, this codec is very particular because it's a, it doesn't work like most of codecs. So um, uh, I think this talk is very interesting. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to just do a quick introduction to myself. So I'm Julian. I'm from Spain. I'm actually from a little town an hour away from Coruña. So I'm glad the conference was hosted this year here because this, this is like home for me. Um, anyways, so I'm... I joined Collabor in 2019, and I've been part of the multi multimedia team since I joined. Uh, so I mostly work with uh, GStreamer, Piper, and Yplumber projects. You have my email there in case you want to ask more questions about what I do. <coughs> uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's for the introduction. Let's jump into the agenda of this presentation. So as you can see, I have divided this uh, presentation into five different topics. <coughs> First, I'm going to explain what's MPEG-5 Part 2 LC EVC. Uh, what benefits uh, are you going to get if you use this new uh, codec? Uh, how we are actually integrating this um <coughs> codec into GStreamer, which, by the way, uh, this is there's no merge request yet. Uh, it hasn't been uh, released or anything. There's just a branch in my personal GStreamer fork. Um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a work in progress. But you know, at the end of the day, uh, at, the, at the end of this conference, I'm gonna just do a demo showing how it works. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, current status and future, and finally the demo. Um, yeah. So let's start by saying what is MPEG five part two or AKA LCEVC. Uh, so LCEVC stands for Low Complexity Enhancement Video Codec. <coughs> It's the latest standard by MPEG and ISO. Um, the codec was developed by Vinova. Uh, they have uh, two libraries, actually, one for decoders and one for encoders. Um, <coughs> you can check the, the link there if you want to know more information about, how it, uh, about the, this codec. It's a copyright, um, so if you want to use it, you have to contact the company. And it's basically a multi-layer approach where any base codec uh, example, uh, H.264 or uh, H.265 AV1 and others is enhanced via uh, an additional low bitrate stream. Okay. <coughs> so uh, to jump into more details, so if a video is encoded with a, an LCVZ encoder, the data stream is basically defined by two components. Uh, it has a based stream decodable component. Uh, which can be decoded by any existing decoder, um, like I said, H.264 or H.265. And then it has an enhancement stream, which can be, um <coughs> which is generated by encoding the actual residuals of the difference between a higher resolution frame and the actual video frame. So the encoder basically gets the video frame, downscales the video, checks the difference between both resolutions, and encodes those residuals. Uh, and then add that to the video stream. Uh, so yeah, the LCVC enhancement, that's what they call the enhancement data. That enhancement data is stored in the actual video stream as, um, it dep depending on the codec, but for example, for H.264, it's added as uh, supplemental enhanced information. Um, that is uh, a kind of null unit to store metadata, uh, no content uh, without any, it doesn't content, content any video at all. Um, <coughs> so this is uh, the flow of how the whole thing kind of works. Um, so we have uh, the top chart is basically the encoder and the bottom one is the decoder. So we have a decoded video stream. The encoder basically downscales the video, usually is uh, by half. Um, so for example, if you have a 4K video, you know, the downscaling would be to 2K. Uh, then it, it uses a base, existing base encoder, 
for example, H.264, to encode the lower resolu resolution image. And all those three inputs are, are used by the uh, encoder to basically generate that enhancement data. Um, so that's how we encode it. Now, how do we decode it? Uh, the decoder basically has like a demuxer that uh, reads that enhanced data from the, in this case, uh, supplemental enhanced information null units, <coughs> um, decodes the, uh, uh, the base video stream using the existing decoder, and then enhanced that decoder frame in low resolution uh, with the enhancement data to create a high resolution uh, video. Um, so that's that's pretty much how uh, this codec works. So what benefits has uh, this uh <coughs> codec? The, the biggest advantage of this, in my opinion, is that it leverages existing video codecs. So it doesn't replace H.264 or H.265. You know, it doesn't compete with those. Um, it has a high quality and resolutions at up to 40% lower bit rates. So for example, if you encode a 4K video with H.264, the bit rates are going to be higher than if you use uh, LCVC. Um, now it has also up to 70% lower complexity. It provides faster, higher density, and more sustainable encoding. And the best of all is that it has backward compatibility too. So basically, that means that any encoded HCVC video can be decoded with regular uh, codecs, even if you don't have the LCVC codecs installed. You just don't have the video enhanced, but um, you know you can see the video. So those are all the benefits. Um, so now we're gonna jump into uh, GStreamer <coughs> LCVC integration. How you know I started uh, integrating this codec into GStreamer. So um, Vinova has two libraries. Um, so there is a LCVC deck library which basically allows you to enhance uh, raw video frames uh, by sending uh, the enhancement data. And then there is a uh, LCVC encoder integration uh, library. It's called EIL. Uh, this one is a bit more complex. Uh, it has a plugin system uh, to basically use existing uh, base encoders um, to encode basically LCVC video. Um, the reason for this is because um, plugins can be implemented. So if you want to use existing codecs, you just have to write a plugin for the library to be used. Um, um, so yeah, uh, and then so because of that, because there's really two uh, two SDKs or two libraries, uh, the way I integrated this in GStreamer is basically creating two plugins. Uh, it's in bad, in uh, ext. Um, so one plugin is called LCVC decoder, and the other one is LCVC encoder. So I created two different plugins because it's two different libraries, and you know maybe users have only access to one library, and uh, they can just build one plugin without the other one. Um, <coughs> so let's talk about the LCVC decoder plugin. Um, so how how um, GStreamer can decode this uh, LCVC video stream. So first off, we had to add some kind of new metadata, which is GST LCVC meta, uh, to store the enhancement data somehow in the pipeline. Um, that enhanced data is stored as a GST buffer in the actual GST meta structure. So the, the, the GST LCVC meta structure is basically, you know, the, the parent GST meta and basically a GST buffer holding that uh, enhancement, uh, enhancement data. Uh, now the parser element is the one charge to parse the uh, enhancement data from the, uh, from the video stream. Uh, in this case, if it's H.264, uh, it would be from the supplemental enhanced information and attach that uh, data to buffers using that new metadata so that basically any kind of downstream elements can use it. Uh, now, there is a new LCVC deck element, which I'm not, sure, I'm, I'm not sure if that's the best name for it, but for now that's how it's called, because it's actually the enhancer, is the one that enhances the raw uh, video frames. <coughs> um, 
And finally, there's a new type of caps. Well, it's actually a caps field. Um, so it's, and that is needed for auto-plugging to basically use um, the LC LCVC uh, decoder only when it's needed, because we don't want to use it when the video doesn't have enhancing data. Uh, so for example, the caps would look like that for H.264. You have a video slash X, H.264, comma, and then LCVC equals true if it has LCVC data or false if it doesn't have it. Uh, so, we, uh, if we want to look at this uh, from a pipeline perspective, so above we have an example of uh, a decoding pipeline that doesn't have uh, LCVC <coughs> um, data, and on the bottom one we have uh, one that has LCVC data. So, um, this is uh, pretty interesting because it changed a little bit how video is decoded. Uh, right until now, it was basically <coughs> a demuxer and then the parser, and then the decoder. Well, now we have like an extra layer. We have demuxer, parser, decoder, and enhancer. Um, so that element here, for example, would um, read the metadata uh, from the input buffers, enhance the picture, and output um, raw video buffers in a high resolution. <coughs> so auto-plugging, how auto plugging works because we want to also use decode bean and play bean and all these elements uh, and we want to only use um, you know that when when the video has LCVC data so for that there's new LCVC decode bean elements for each codec type okay there's only one per codec type that is only one for H.264 one for H.265 AV1 etc <coughs> um, so the, that being element, basically, or those being elements, they wrap uh, the base decoder and the LCVC decoder together so that, you know, the whole thing can be treated as, as one element, as one deco big decoder element. Now, the bin, um, since there can be a lot of uh, different uh, base codecs for the same codec type, like you know, in this room, we have open H.264 deck or AV deck H.264 or even hardware acceleration uh, codecs. Uh, so by default, the bin works in a similar way as decode bin. It basically finds the, high, the, the base decoder with highest rank. Uh, but the obviously, there's also a property if you want to use a particular um, codec instead of the highest one. Um, and that being element have <coughs> a higher rank than all the base decoders so that it's selected by default automatically. And uh, the sync caps of that uh, decode being uh, element uh, has the uh, requirement of LCVC equals true in the caps. This is very important because we don't want to select automatically this decoder if we don't have LCVC data. Like base decoders, they accept, they don't have, you know, any uh, LCVC equals true or false caps uh, in the sync pad. So they basically can work with both video regardless of what it has, uh, LCVC data. Uh, and again, that's the reason for this, because we only want to use the decoder uh, when it's needed. So here's a picture of uh, how these decode bean, LCVC decode bean elements would look like. Uh, so it basically have the first box here. It's the base decoder. It can be, um, as I said, AV deck H264 or open H264 deck. Again, the one that has the highest priority. Um, and um, then the second element would be the enhancer, the LCVC deck that basically enhances the picture. And for example, if you want to use decode bin, a pipeline would look like this. Um, so we have a file source, and then we have the whole decode bin that basically finds the demuxer, the parser, and in this case, because the caps are set here equals to true, and this element has higher priority, is going to automatically select it instead of just a regular decoder like um, AV deck H.264. <coughs> um, so yeah, that's uh, for the um, decoder. Now we are jump on the uh, encoder. So the encoder is a bit different, and this is because of how the uh, SDK library from Vinova is implemented. Um, so for the encoder, uh, there's going to be just 
uh, different elements for each codec type. They all inherit from a common based class, which is, uh, I didn't add it here, but it's GST, LC, VC encoder. Uh, but basically, those different elements, they, um, they find the first EIL plugin, that is a plugin uh, from the library, with a magic codec type. The plugin is the actual implementation of uh, the, the encoding for that type. And now, specific plugins can be selected with a property too, if the user wants to use a, you know, a particular plugin. Uh, but again, the elements find the first one available in this case, because uh, so far it doesn't have a rank yet. Uh, we could improve that to have a rank in uh, the EIL plugins. Um, and also, support for existing GStream encoders can be also added implementing EIL plugins. Uh, so those EIL plugins, they would internally run a GStreamer pipeline with AppSync up source uh, and use then the GStreamer base encoder, the existing ones. Um, so that can be done. The only thing is a EIL plugin needs to be implemented. <coughs> and again, this is because of how the, uh, the library is implemented. So for example, this is how um <coughs> the encoder would be. Um, so this is a, it's not a bin. Um, so the element inside uses the EIL API from Vinova, and the API basically loads, in this case, it loads the H X264 encoder, which uh, plugin, which is uh, this library over here, and basically the element encodes the video. It, you, you send basically raw uh, video frames, and it encodes um, uh, the video in, um, with enhanced information. Um, now, plugins have properties, and there is a property uh, on these elements that accept basically a comma-separated list of, you know, plugin properties that are forward to the plugin to basically configure, you know, all of the, all of the uh, encoding. Uh, this is another example of, <coughs> you know, a plugin that internally runs a GStream pipeline with AppSync and AppSource and obviously uses the X264 Inc. element, um, which, yeah... So, so this one basically already uses, this was already implemented by Vinova. It already uses the uh, Libex 264. And this one is basically a plugin that uses existing, um, you know, uh, GStream encoders. Uh, which is very, which can be, this is not implemented yet, but this is the idea. Uh, this would allow basically use any kind of GStreamer uh, encoders. Uh, so yeah, basically an encoding pipeline would be as, as easy as that. So it's just the video, video test source. Use the, uh, in this case, uh, the uh, encoder element for H.264. The output caps are obviously LCVC equals true, and uh, the LCVC enhancement data is attached to uh, the video stream um, using a supplemental enhanced information null unit. Now obviously we have the, the Muxer and file sync. <coughs> Transcoding pipeline also works, so it would be like this. Uh, you have demuxer, the parse, avdeck, then you have the enhancer element, and then we can um, encode it back just with a simple GST launch pipeline serial. I would like to mention that uh, w one of the reasons why we decided to attach um, LCVC uh, metadata to buffers is because instead of just creating another pad, it's because, um, you know, we don't want to, we want to make this decoder to behave in the same way as most of existing encoders, yeah, uh, decoder, sorry. Uh, so, for example, if our application wants to update, you know, uh, to LCVC, they just need to, in their pipeline, switch to, uh, you know, uh, to the new decoder. They don't have to worry about new pads or new branches or running uh, you know, different branches of the pipeline parallel. So it's very easy to basically uh, update your CVC in, um, in their application. <coughs> so the current status and future. So uh, again, the current status, like I said, this is not merge. Uh, there's not even a merge request. There's only a branch in my uh, GStreamer for repository. Uh, only H.264 is supported. Uh, it's a work in progress. Uh, the next steps would be, you know, add support for more codecs. Um, again, you need to have installed the uh, LCVC DEC and LCVC EIL libraries on your system. Uh, the LCVC DEC has been released there, uh, but the other one is not 
uh, release yet. Eventually, we know that soon it's going to release it. Um, as soon as they release it, I'll create a merge request uh, so that all of you can uh <coughs> test it. And like I said, the plugins are in my personal fork. Uh, in uh, That's the, the branch. The branch is called LCVs in Cordoba. It has a decoder, too. Um, so what's next? Um, another request from Vinova was uh, because they might be interested in storing the uh, enhancement data as a separate stream in uh, the video containers, because uh, that can be useful. Um, so <coughs> uh, uh, another thing to do would be to handle that, uh, so basically to improve the the demoxers and the moxers to basically handle the uh, LCVC uh, metadata and store it in a separate stream if you know the the video pad has that. Um, obviously, you know if you want to control where the LCVC data is stored, whether in the video or where they're in. Um, in the container, we need to implement some kind of new LCVC combined element that basically, you know, uh, basically re reads the input buffers with uh, LCVC data uh, and creates the uh, supplemental enhanced information uh, into the stream. Uh, because that, that could be useful, for example, if you want to send, you know, LCVC video over RTP using the payloaders and stuff like that. Because that way, we, we don't need to basically change any of the, all those elements. Um, yeah, as I said, it allows users to have full control of where LCVC enhancement data is present. And obviously, add support for more codecs. <coughs> uh, so I'm going to do a demonstration now. Uh, I'm going to run these pipelines. I think I, I'm good in time. I'm going to run these pipelines. So I have the decoding pipeline. I have two decoding pipelines. I have one that doesn't use decode bin for auto plugging and the second one uses auto for, uh, for auto-plugging. Then I have an encoding pipeline, which basically encodes raw video buffers. <coughs> and then I have a transcoding pipeline, which basically encodes the video and decodes and shows it on screen. Um, so yeah, the first pipeline here is on the top left. Uh, so I have a file source. Um, I have two TDMux, H264 parts, AVDAC, H264, LCVC DAC, and auto video sync. Um, so see, it's just a random video about uh, nature. Um, so it's decoding video. And for example, if I remove the LCVC deck, the video is going to still be decoded, but it's not going to be in such high resolution, right? So you see, it's uh, small, it's not enhanced. Uh, but this is a LCVC video stream, and you know, if you don't have installed the LCVC plugin, video still works. You, you can still see it. Decode bin is uh, on the on the top right terminal. This is auto plugging. You can see that it works. Um, you know, it's uh, it selects that plugin automatically. <coughs> now I'm going to use the encoder, which is this pi pipeline. Uh, as you can see, uh, so it's a uh, yeah video test source. Uh, I add a time overlay, and uh, these are the caps I'm doing um, 720p. 24 frame rate, and then I'm doing uh, the H64 encoder, and I'm passing these properties here to the uh, EIL plugin, which is preset super fast and tunes your latency. Then I'm doing, uh, I'm parsing it, I'm doing MP4 mux, and I'm storing this in a container with file sync. Uh, so if I run it, so it's basically encoding. <coughs> so I'm going to stop it right now. I can do it to the M player play the video. Obviously, it's not, see, this is not 720p. It's basically uh, 480p um, because, you know, Mplayer doesn't have, um, doesn't have the uh, LCVC support yet. But for example, if I use, if I try to play this out dot mp4, see, that's 720p because uh, the streamer has uh, support for LCVC. And finally, transcoding pipeline is basically the same. I'm just encoding, you know, video test source, pattern ball, with time overlay, and then I'm decoding it and enhancing it. Uh, so yeah, there it is. And again, if, um, if I um, remove the enhancement element here, 
Um, yeah, the video is not enhanced, but we can still see it. And that's all for the um, presentation. Are there any questions? Yes. <laughs>
it needed that because otherwise it would use the LCVC decoder, which would do pass through because it doesn't have an LCVC, LCVC data. But you know, we just don't want to use that whole thing because it's not it's not necessary. Uh, yeah. I I I'll after I'll show you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I I know because I had this discussion many times. And we actually need it because otherwise, it's also the, basically the, the, the answer is we need them to avoid using LCVC decoder when the video doesn't have LCVC data. That's, that's the answer. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I have a question yeah. regarding the, um, you use AVDEC to decode the H.264, then you get like a row, uh, uh, raw data, yes. and uh, so the LCVC data are applied on the row. Yes. Right. Yes. So uh, it would work with any decoder. Yes, as long as there's a way to store, you know, metadata in the new codec in the SCI. SC, uh, yeah, supplement enhanced information. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, so which I think all codecs have that. You know, H.265 has that, AV1 has that, uh, VP8 has that, I think, too. So. But the LCVC data is applied on row. It's not a uh, codec related. No, no, no. It's applied, sorry, it's applied on the encoded video. Okay. In the null, it's a null unit. It's ah, a it special null unit. Ah, okay. Yes. <laughs> um? Enhancement is not on the row. The row is just... Huh? The better frame. Yes, but that's think because it's attached in GST buffers. It's not in the actual yeah, but, content. But, but the actual enhancement is independent of whatever codec is used. It's just the codec is just a transport media for the enhancement data. Exactly, exactly, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. um, any more questions? Oh, yeah, one here. Hi, thanks for the presentation. I was wondering about uh, if, so the X264 parse already can extract the enhancement that data. Is it already merged? Into uh, the the it's on the branch. It's on the ah, branch, okay. yes. Uh, it's not merged yet, yes, but it's on the branch. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I think we are running out of time. Thank you mm -hmm. very much for your attention.